Hi friends, it's Mari here for Honeybee Stamps. I'm going to start my card making process off today by creating some backgrounds for my project and I'm going to be using my 5x7 gel press and some sprays that I have in my stash. These happen to be Lindy's Stamp Gang Starburst sprays but you could use any sprays that are gel plate friendly for this process so your oxide sprays would work and so on. Uh, I'm just working away here with some colors that I really like. You can just pick out whatever colors from the color wheel that will work together and spray those onto your gel press. I added a little bit of water over top of my Starburst sprays and now I'm putting a piece of A2 size mixed media paper onto my gel press. I'm just putting that extra piece of paper over top while I press on that and now you, you can just see how gorgeous this paper is when that pigment transfers onto my mixed media paper. I'm just going to take a baby wipe and sop up that extra pigment there and water and now I'll just set that one aside to dry while I clean up this gel plate. <clears throat> I'm going to clean up some of the pigment here with my scrap paper and I'm actually going to die cut from this scrap paper a little bit later. So I'll set these papers off so that they can dry and now I've got my space cleaned up again I can do another print. So I'm going to go with a few more different colors this time. Again these are my Lindy's Starburst sprays. Make sure that you just use whatever you have in your stash and I know that Honeybee has lots of really great options in their shop as well and I'm just choosing again just colors that I like and colors that I know will work well together and I had so much fun with this process. I love playing with my gel plate. It's a lot of fun. I find that it's super relaxing and it's just neat to see what you get for prints when you pull your paper off of that plate. So again, I'm just putting that scrap paper over top so that I can give a press onto my mixed media paper and I'll pull that off with the tweezers and see what I get here when I reveal that. And it's so, so pretty. I just love that. Once I have that excess uh, moisture picked up off of there with the baby wipe again and my plate's all clean, I'll show you another way that you can sprinkle pigment onto your gel plate. So if you've got some Nouveau um, sprinkles, shimmer sprinkles in your stash or something like that, a powder that uh, activates with water. You can use that on your gel plate too. So I have sprayed my gel plate with water at this point and now I'm just taking my fan brush and sprinkling some of this pigment onto the plate, onto my gel press. And this is this happens to be a Lindy's Magicals, but like I said, you can use any of your powders um, that activate into beautiful pigments like this. And I'm going to go in with another color as well. I think I only used two different colors for my background on this particular one. And it's just kind of fun just playing around and seeing what you get with these different prints there you can just see that color that I used so just a really pretty gold and a pretty blue I'm going to spritz that again with water and now I'll just take my paper and in that same way I'll just press that into the pigment on the press and I'm going to get just the most beautiful color combo here with this one I love it so much it actually reminds me of the colors of the flag from Ukraine so I really love this one and we're going to have the little reveal here with the tweezers and I think this is absolutely gorgeous. So just going to go ahead and soak up that extra moisture with the baby wipe again. I'll clean this all up. I'll set that aside to dry and you can use these pieces for die cutting. You can use them for your background whatever you prefer. I like to have a bunch of these in my stash so when I start working on something like this I like to make a whole bunch of backgrounds and then just kind of store them in a container in my space so that when I want to make a quick card I can go into that container and I have a bunch of backgrounds already made to choose from and you can use this same you can do the same thing with any type of medium that you like to use on your gel press including alcohol inks or acrylic paints watercolors whatever you like to use so I'm just going to finish this print up here and this is gorgeous I can't wait till you see this one look how pretty so I just love that so much so I'm going to be using <clears throat> the pardon me the spring blooms stamp from honeybee this is a six by six background stamp and I love making lots of fun different card 
uh, backgrounds with large stamps like this. So I'm actually going to ink this up with some black ink. You can see that I've got it in my Misty on an angle. So it's angling across the top of that background, that colorful background that I pulled off my gel plate. Now I'm going to add a little bit of clear embossing powder over top of this black ink. And this is a slow drying black ink so that my um, embossing powder has lots of time to go ahead and stick to that ink. And so I'll just take that excess clear embossing powder off there. I'll now take my heat tool and melt that. And that's just going to make that black ink pop even more off of that background just because it's it then becomes shiny as well. So it's just really vibrant on that background. I love the angle that you get there. And I don't know if you can see on camera, but the Starburst sprays are shimmery as well. There's a shimmer to them. So if you wanted to use your Tim Holtz shimmer sprays, you could use those as well. And that would also make something fairly similar to the Starburst sprays. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the background stamp into my Misty again here. I'm going to lay it completely over top of another background. And this time I'm going to do some embossing with some clear embossing ink and some white embossing powder. So once I have my six by six stamp on here, I'm going to just pick that up with the door of the Misty and I'll go ahead and ink it up with the Honey Bee Stamps Clear Embossing Watermark Ink. This works really well. I love this ink. If you haven't picked this up yet, it is really fantastic. And Honey Bee also has the um, refill bottles as well that you can purchase with the ink pad, which is super handy. So now I've got that inked up. I'm just going to press that down onto my paper. I've got that placed on my desk now, just over top of a scrap piece of paper so that I don't get my embossing powder everywhere because I am in fact going to just dump the whole container <laughs> over top of this piece and I'm just going to let that fall all over the card front here so that the embossing powder gets all over where I've stamped that clear ink and you can see that embossing powder just sticks to that image those uh, images or that image from the six by six stamp and it just is so so pretty I love that I love the how the white just pops as well from this beautiful purple and blue background so such a stunning background and so easy to do I really love this and you don't need to put a ton more on your card front because this is stunning in itself. So I love that stamp from Honey Bee. The Spring Bloom stamp is designed, was designed by Emily Midget and it's gorgeous. And it's one of my favorite all time stamps from Honey Bee. So if you haven't picked that one up yet, make sure that you do so. I'm using the A2 double stitched frame die here to create a stitched, um, nice stitched edge on that piece and now I'm going to use the lovely layers bugs dies to create some details for my card fronts so I've die cut the dragonfly from this piece that I created on from my gel plate and I'm going to adhere the pieces of the dragonfly together with some foam adhesive just to give it a little bit of dimension so I'm just using my honeybee craft tool here to help me place those different little pieces of foam adhesive on there and I'll stick that to the wings of the dragonfly and I'll be ready to start to assemble the card at this point. I'm going to use some half inch uh, foam tape for the back of my card and what this is going to do is it's going to completely flatten my mixed media paper out. You can see it's slightly warped from the water that I used, the moisture that I used in that mixed media process from the gel press, but this foam adhesive is going to completely flatten that out. So what I'm going to do just to make sure I have a little wiggle room when I put this onto my A2 size top folding card base is I'm just going to add a little bit of liquid adhesive on each one of those foam strips. And then when I go to put this onto my card base, it'll it won't grab right away. It'll just let me move it around slightly for a few seconds anyway and allow me to get it onto my card as straight as I possibly am able to do so which is not 100% straight but it's pretty close so I'm happy with it. So I'm going to get that placed on there. I'll give that a really good press in fact I think I do end up putting some paper weights on there um, off camera just to make sure that it adheres really well and I'm going to add some foam adhesive to the wings of my dragonfly here and then I'll just take my tweezers and get this adhered. I did hot foil and die cut a sentiment for this project with the foil script love set 
Um, I don't usually hot foil on camera because my setup is not near my desk. So I, I actually have a Go Power, is it called a Go Go press and foil or something like that it's from Kucher Creations it works really well I love my machine and it hot foils my honeybee plates so well and I have got a gold foil on here which is beautiful and I've popped that up with some foam adhesive and I'm just going to adhere the dragonfly's tail the very end of the tail there onto the sentiment I did that on purpose because Getting a little bit of foam adhesive onto the bottom of that tail would basically be impossible because it's really thin, but I wanted that to be dimensional. So I just glued it down to the top of the sentiment and I love how this turned out. Now I did end up using some of the Happy Hearts gems for the body of the dragonfly in that really pretty iridescent blue color. Uh, love these gems so much. And of course they have the adhesive on the back so they're super easy to adhere to your project. I love how that card turned out. I think it's really pretty. Now I use this embossing folder. I'm forgetting the name of it, but I will make sure that I link up to it in the description box below. It was one of the releases from the Happy Hearts collection. And I used that embossing folder to emboss some black cardstock just to give it a little bit of extra texture. And I cut that in a strip to add just below that diagonal line of stamping from that spring bloom stamp. So I'm just going to add that along that line and it's just going to create <clears throat> just another little extra bit of detail on the card. I think it looks really neat. I'll just flip that over and take my scissors and snip that excess of that paper off and now I'm ready to add the details to my card. I will go ahead again and add foam adhesive to the back of this card front to make sure that it's nice and flat. And this time I die cut out the butterfly from Lovely Layers Bugs. I die cut it from some of that paper that we created from the gel press using those sprays. And I'm just gonna use foam adhesive to adhere the butterfly together. And then I'm going to adhere it onto my card front with some foam adhesive as well. Again, I used that foil script love foil plate and die to create the with love sentiment and I use some purple foil for that and I'm going to finish off the body of my butterfly with a little bit of yellow um, paper that was created with the gel press as well and I will add some little pearl a pearl sticker to the head area of the little butterfly and the pearl sticker is from the happy hearts pearls as well so I'm going to go ahead and add this on and then I will add everything onto my card. I apologize for my voice today. I've been struggling with a little bit of a cold. So doing voiceovers when you have a cold isn't much fun, but I know that it's really annoying when you're listening to someone speaking when they have a cold. So I apologize for that. So now I'm just going to take my tweezers and add my sweet little butterfly on here. And I will adhere the with love sentiment with some foam adhesive as well, just to pop that up. And I really love how these cards turned out. I hope you enjoyed watching the process of creating some backgrounds with some sprays, but also with a background stamp. There's a lot of really fun ways to use background stamps on A2 size cards. Um, it's a really great tool to have in your stash for creating some beautiful backgrounds. And I enjoyed creating these today, that's for sure. And I hope that you enjoyed the outcome with these two really pretty cards. And you can just see where I put that pearl sticker there for the head area of that um, butterfly. So thanks so much, friends. I did link up in the description box below to all of the different products that I used today. And have an amazing day. And I will see you again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.